means part. Imagination. When Lot took the east side, God had to bring Abraham out. His head dropped. So God asked him, Abraham, lift up your head. Lift up your head and look to northward, southward, eastward, westward, including the good place. So call a good place that Lord had taken. God returned it back to Abraham. He was trying to spark his imagination. You can't get beyond what you can see. That's the power of imagination. We have stressed that throughout the meeting. But in case you are not around, your imagination determines the, the depth and the length, the depth and the height and the length of life that you can go. If you keep seeing small, small things, see only things that are around you, only to eat, only to wear, only to make up, and that's all that you are seeing, then your life is miserable. God wants you to see beyond your nose. Say, so look as far as you can see. There's nothing you see that I cannot give it to you. There's nothing you can imagine that I cannot give it to you. Even himself say, of, of the sons of men, when they had planned to build the Tower of Babel, God had to come down. He spoke to Trinity. Let's go down. This thing that they have imagined to do, nothing can stop them to, uh, from achieving their goal if we don't go down. Nothing. They, they just sat. Say, Can't we build a structure that will get to heaven? Incredible thought. Incredible imagination. And I said yesterday, if you want to fly with your legs, if you can imagine that, and the imagination becomes strong and solid in you, very soon you fly with your leg, with your legs. You can fly. There's nothing impossible. Praise God. So, but the factor in that first day meeting is that there's nothing anyone had taken from you by cook that you will not get it back. The Lord will restore that to you in the mighty name of Jesus. On the second day, we talk about divine intervention. Laban had, had sweet journey, meaning that let me see how you make it. You will not have opportunity to take it. But a divine idea, divine inspiration, a dream received in the spirit realm was at work. They can steal anything from you, but they cannot steal an idea from you. An idea that is stolen will not have a force as it is in the heart of the person, in the hand of the person that is given to. And that young man, whatever Laban did, he kept to the dream, he kept doing that, and very soon became the heavy of Laban and his sons. Genesis 31, he shouldn't say, you have taken the wealth of our father. And I pray the Lord will so bless you that people will begin to envy you. But he didn't take. It's what he got by revelation. And revelation come by your divine connection to God. God does not speak to sinners. He does not speak to aliens. He speaks to his children. If you are a child of God, you can hear God. He can tell you. He can open your eye. Say, I will reveal to you. I will show you great and mighty things which you never know, which you know not. There's something that you know that you will be told to do. You have been inspired to do that. If you do it, the world will be at a better call. It's not by struggle. And I say, it's by strength shall no man prevail. On the third day, we saw the factor of prophetic connection. Praise the Lord. The wife of the prophet, you remember that story? The husband died a debtor. And his two sons were taken as serpent, as slaves by the creditor. He was crying. So, first came chapter 4. She had heard of the prophet coming. And then she ran to Elisha and cried. Your servant served God diligently. He feared God very well, but he was owing debt. 
I prophesy in this meeting today, anyone committed to God will never be in penury. What you, how will you serve God and you be in debt? Then there's a factor at play. Ignorance. May your eyes of understanding be enlightened today to see the riches that is in Christ Jesus. That is the prayer that Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesian church in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Can I get it? Ephesians 1. So they were zealously serving God but they did not know the mystery. The benefit that is served. So, oh, and that's why so many people are saying, oh, I've been serving God and I have nothing to show. There's something you have not known. That thing is heading in your life today in the name of Jesus. That the God of all, but that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Verse 18. 18. Praise God. Hallelujah. That may give you, that you may comprehend, that you may see. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It is the one of them. Being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Do you hear that? So you cannot be committed to God and you die as a debtor. It's not allowed. It is not. But there's something you may need to know your eyes of understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope. And how would that be enlightened? It's by, the, it's by learning of the world. By the study of the world. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed rightly applying, dividing, apportioning the word of truth. Only thing that takes you from the place of shame is understanding of the world. Because when you know it, you know how to apply it in every situation. Anyone that does not give attention to the world will always be faced and probably defeated by shame. The greatest thing that God has given to us is the word. Word. The word of faith, the word of salvation. Is the, is the word that brings salvation? Is the word of inheritance? He said, Look, that your eye will understand. That you may see the riches that is in Christ Jesus. Praise God. That prosperity, abundance does not come through prophecy and visions. I mean by seeing visions for you. Prosperity does not come. I prophesy you a millionaire. It doesn't really make you a millionaire. How many of those prophecies have you received? And where are you? It makes you poorer sometimes because those prophets will take from you first. 10,000 naira for prophecy. 20,000 under prophecy. A prophecy of $1,000 is there. And if your own is five naira, your own prophecy is more. People go about buying prophecies. They won't sell their cars because there's a man of God that you want to make you rich. When a man makes you rich, how rich will you be? I love Abraham. He said, look, hold this thing. Lest you say one day you have made me rich. I'm not going to take, he had gone to war, make conquer, and the said, no, 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 no. Take everything. Lest you say, he had not the capacity or the incapacity of a man to make him wish. The type of word and promise had God, the promise of blessing that had God from God, no man can deliver it. So he will not amass himself. Because God has called him and said, I'll make you a blessing. I'll bless you above all nations. I will make you a blessing. I'll make your seed to be blessed. And in your, from your seed, all the families of the earth, including the 
king that was offering, say, including his family, will be blessed to Abraham. Abraham knew it. Praise God. That's why in our church, where God gives us privilege to a pastor, in and outside of here, we have never extorted any man. Praise God. We have never put a call to because we share a testament or a million and say, ah, the Lord is saying this. Come and do this. No. Because it must not be linked to us that you are the one who made me rich. My commitment and service to God attracts a reward from God. And that's all. Anyone has blessed me with anything will be honest to testify that I have never asked for. Amen. Secretly, openly, your testimony ends there. I go home to celebrate God. God made this move and bless him permanently in your son and your daughter. Keep it increasing. But I'll never say, you know I'm praying for you. You are not even doing anything for me. Did they call me? The person who called me to pray for them is the one that is paying me. And he pays well. He pays very well. God is a good employer. In my next word, he does anyone again. I will rule very, very early. Praise God. That's it. Dream. Inspiration. And the third that we talk about, prophetic connection. Okay, is the prophetic connection. And, and the man say, what do you have? Say, I don't have anything at all. You can see that we are poor. Stop bragging about poverty. Stop marketing it. He does not impress. You know, say, so let me do to uh, attract sympathy. A person that is carrying glory, carrying grace, choice, child of God, you want to be empathized. It's one thing I never do. If I'm hungry, you don't know, except you are sensitive in the spirit, you don't know that I'm not eating. Because it can never, it will never come out of our life. We're going through a, a trying time, sometimes 2006, 2007. As soon, as soon, that was the time I resigned from work, at our full time ministry, and then calamity came, demolition, lost property, lost everything, and we didn't have anything. And he had a yoga brother in this city doing very well. Praise God. I have friends that if I put one call through, there are those who say, Dr. Akaku, you want to leave, leave uh, lecturing to become pastor? I, I hope hunger will not make you come back. <laughs> Praise God. One call, I'll have everything I'll need, but not one, including the one that is our blood. And not up to here, the face pass. Why do you look for people to say, do you, let me say, your servant doesn't have anything, you say you must have who? Look in what? The prophet insisted. He said, eh, except this small uh, that thing you are undermining, it can be your springboard to greatness. He said to him, that's all I need. Go and borrow vessels, empty one. Create opportunities now. Make rooms. Make rooms. Look, there are people that are too full that they cannot take more. Even to learn. Say, ah, I've known so much. They can't take more. They, there's no way to add anything again. He said, go, borrow. So he brought vessels and he asked him, ask her to shut doors. Between, behind her and her two sons. You kind of stay inside and concentrate on what you are doing. Stop this parabrating around. Stay inside here. Stay. Be serious. Concentrate with what you are doing. When you are committed, concentrated, dist undistracted, it will bring a result. You lock your shop by 7 a.m. By 9 a.m. you are going to visit to do what? To sit down and talk? Well, I say that if you are here, the full, I'm just taking just highlight of those messages. 
the Lord asked me to review it. Because somebody will be blessed. Praise the Lord. And when he, she did that, she, ex, she exclaimed, we don't have anything more. And I want to comment on that. Are you too full of yourself? Do you have a room to expand? Why didn't she go and borrow more? Praise God. You know, we limit ourselves. Ah, it is enough. There's a lady I wanted to marry before. Praise the Lord. The Lord delivered me. As a student, I use my phone, my money, last money. You know, this, 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 this thing called love, but if you are dying of hunger, you like to give. If he say, says he loves you, he's not giving you, he's telling you lies. Bought a form, admission form, to UNN or ABU then, because I was in ABU then, to give to her. And my friend went to deliver trek kilometers. He said, mm, Bra Sunday is too ambitious. Likes the thing of the world. He's even doing a master's. This first degree you are drawn, so I will just come and wait and start life. Hmm? It took like book. And my friend came back and briefed me. She never filled that form. She was already teaching to do long vacation a degree program. She never filled the form to get on it. My last 15 naira that I did not eat for four days to take how do you call them? Is it fiancé, fiancé? To call to take the fiancé I mark it up. I read this book, The Authority of a Believer, for Genaido. It turned me around. So I gave her to read. I want her to grow spiritually. So he was giving those books to Authority of a Believer was one and uh, Casey Price, How Faith Works. I got it. She and it was turning my head. I want her to read. You gave to Brian, say, Bra Sunday. She told me, mm, it didn't have this thing. If God gave me power to do the one that I've had, I will be okay. Praise God. And I had in my spirit, you don't need another prayer to know that this is not God's will for you. I didn't say, God, this is your will. You know His will already. So at first you say, God, because your mind is there, because you are not also ignited, you want to tempt God. It's God, so I know it is not His will. So no, normally, then there's a popular way you used to write. We are not compatible. That simple word. Praise God, and that ends the whole story. About 15 years later, she went to run. LVT. Did you hear that? Run LVT. My life has been grounded. What am I saying? Don't set limits for yourself. Because the limit, the place you think you are now, and you think you are at the peak, very soon others are coming to overtake. You will go behind. Don't set limit for yourself. Anyone who wants to enjoy last portion does not set limits. If I can handle this, I am okay. Who told you? Has your life ended? You, you won't be okay. Praise God. You will not be okay. Praise God. You won't be okay. Things are changing. There is dynamic of time. What is excellent today may not even be regarded good tomorrow. So you need to keep expanding you are frontiers. You need to keep adding. You need to keep putting new structures. If you have one, add two. You have to make it four. Look at Peter. Is it a Philippians for something? He said to your faith, add virtue. To virtue, add love. Add, 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 add. Life is about adding. No, just, oh, I've got enough. I am here. Somebody is coming to overtake you. May you not be the greatest man of yesterday in Jesus' name. That's what the, I don't want to say, oh, 
This one's a fool. I'm okay. What stopped you? What stopped her from going to look for more? Or this becomes a blessing with the supernatural force that was following. And yesterday we we'll talked about anointing. Anointing that break the yoke. By their ointment, favor comes through anointing. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run over. That is surplus. If it is God has anointed your head, no matter what the wicked does, will not affect you. They can gang up. There could be a conspiracy. And the Bible says, when the enemy comes in one way, they will, they will scatter how many ways? Seven ways. Because there's a force from heaven. There's a fighter. There's a man called Jehovah. The man of war. There's a standing army in the heaven to defend anything that God is behind. And do you know God is behind your life a project. You are a project of God. You are on a mission, you are on a word, you are on a commitment, you are on an assignment, you are on a covenant move. Any battle that attempt to defeat you, there will be an angel in the air. Ask Joshua, when he fought the Amalekites, or you go and ask the Amalekites, when there was war, and it was like, wow, will we make it or not? Joshua was in the midst of the battle. He raised his eye and saw someone in the middle of the air with sword prepared, hang on the way. And that one said, Are you for us or you are against us? He said, I'm the captain. I'm the ca This battle you are fighting, I'm the captain. I'm the one in charge. I'm the captain of the host of the army of the law. I've come to deal with the Amalekites. Suddenly, the battle turned. That's why I'm passionate about having connection with God and working with God purposefully. Don't try with your life. Your life is beyond entertainment. Ah! They are bringing a comedian that place to that church today. You are going to listen to a comedian to make you laugh. After you learn, you now it's not you. You are praying to watch comedy. 5,000, 100,000, and they say, hey, look at how wide your mouth is. Your mouth is even scattered. You will laugh more. He say, hey, I perceive the order from you. You laugh and you pay. Can you see? Can you see that? Praise God. Life is too serious. To mess it around. Life is for a purpose. And the purpose of God is to give you enough so that you can have to do good work. Praise God. After this meeting, the Lord will deliver to you large portion. During the Bible class, I was saying that what make people big or what can make one big so much is your ability to look beyond yourself when you try to satisfy others need blessing will come through that way simply saying that you must live beyond having to eat having to drink last portion it's not large. It's not when somebody just drive a car and drop two bags of rice, one can of malt, one did this and say, hey, last person blessing. No, 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 no. That's not. Last person is when you have to give out. Are you getting right? You have enough. It's not what you receive. It's what you give that determines if you have large portion. Not what you receive. Not what you receive. I had a man of God say, say, look, if you want to know your importance, when you get to a big man house, he was demonstrating there, there's a gatehouse, 
Isn't it? There is a, a veranda. There is a, a waiting room. There is an ante room. There is first parlor. There is a other one. There is another parlor. And there is inner office. So where you are received and where you are stopped tells your importance. Are you getting that? There are those they will discharge them. They will peep through the gate. You say, oh, guy is not around. Or you say, eh, tell him to go. I don't have time. Or he comes out and enter the veranda. Or he tries very well. Himself will come and meet you in the ante room and give you that. You will talk. He didn't say come over to the parlor. And yet there are some people that when they come, he go to the gate himself, open the gate himself, and take them, walk past others, and take them to the upper room. Not to his inner office. Possibly even his bedroom. That was what Samuel did to Saul. Thirty men were seated on the ground floor. And he was waiting outside for he went to the entrance of the city gate, the gate of the city. He received him, walk hand to hand. They passed it to did didn't get in one of them. Passed them. And then he went up and called some of them specifically to come and serve him. That is his importance. Your importance, not how many people you have a selfie with, but how many come to have with you. Have you thought about that one? How would you so, so some people have destroyed even their, their skin, tattooing uh, celebrities who don't know them. They have destroyed their skin. They have this one at the back. They, to the point that they don't do, do, do have anyone to ask. But anything they see appears to, to, to to them and you are not doing anything that make you appeal to others that people start to draw you on their bodies when will they draw you on their bodies when people draw you on their bodies where would they when will someone see you and buy your t-shirt where will become a name on the earth focus Four things I mentioned this morning. Divine connection. Divine inspiration. Intervention. Prophetic connection. And anointing. If you have these four things playing out in your life, last portion is your portion. In the name of Jesus. As I close. Here. Yeah. In the book of First Corinthians six nineteen, a great praise the Lord. Sorry, pardon me. Praise God. Isaiah forty five one to three, please. We are connected to God, before whom all things are open and naked. After this meeting, I pray God to cause you to discover something that puts you on top. Thus said the Lord to his anointed. Hear that one. To his anointed. The one committed to do his purpose. All that translation say to his choosing. You have been chosen by God. No one say Jesus is Lord except by the help of the Holy Spirit. The fact that you are in church, that you believe that Jesus is your Savior, you have been chosen by God. Is somebody happy about that? And don't let the devil tell you that you are not qualified. Amen. Don't let the devil tell you that. Tell you that, please. Say to my choosing, to Cyprus, whose right hand I am holding, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will hold your hand from today. And when the Lord upholds you, no, there's no willingness. There's no power. He said, I'm the only one who can close the door and no man can open. And when I open it, no man can close. He's explaining himself to subdue nations before him. To defend, to defeat 
oppositions and opponents. I will lose the loins of kings. Meaning, they will open their treasure box. People that matter. I'm connecting you. I want you to, again, to open before him the two leaved gates. That is a large portion. Paul said, great and effectual door are open to me. But there are many adversaries. But here, God has promised to handle the adversaries and open the doors wide. Are you getting the connection? Oftentimes, when a door of opportunity is open, you see the enemy rising. But see what God did to Cyprus? He took care of the wicked first. And opened doors. He said, I'll open to, I'll open so that you not, you not squeeze, you, you, you have squeezed enough. A, the time to walk freely to your greatness has come. Whatever has been restricting you, that barrier is pulled down this morning. Do not two lift gates. Which of the doors have two, yeah, at the back door there. When you open the two, the two sides, isn't it? If you open one, you want to move those generators or those aging or machines out, you struggle, isn't it? But when you open the two sides, you can walk and swing, you are free, you go through with ease. In the name of Jesus, after this meeting, your journey to prosperity, your journey to increase is free and smooth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every obstacle standing on your way, every power resisting you hitherto, those powers are destroyed, are demolished, are crushed, evacuated out of your way in the name of Jesus. To open before him, the two lift door, and the gate shall not be shut. And the gate, the door. God is opening for you today. No power of darkness, no force of the wicked, no matter where it's coming from, will be able to shut it in the mighty name of Jesus. Your gates shall not be shut. No more foolish. I'll go before you and make the crooked places straight. The place you say, look, it has been so tough. Life has been so rough. I have been falling. I have been rising and fall. From this meeting today, I decree smoothness for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, every barrier, every bump, every gate, every iron, every barrier, every blast, whatever they are put on your way to slow you down, to limit you, they are caught and sold down today. In the name of Jesus. And caught in a slaughter, the bars of iron verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou may know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Do you hear that? I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Let me speak. Let me pause here. What is the treasure of darkness? Leave it there. Praise God. Treasure of darkness are things that are not easily seen. You need inspiration. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered to the heart of any man what the Lord has kept for them that love him. Do you hear that? There are opportunities. Are people not opening companies, new companies around? Yesterday, they brought water for me. And I, I said, what's the deal for me? The bottle was so, the color, I said, and I told my wife, this person, do you know what he's doing? Because most of these bottles bottle of water now, some people just pick the rubbers. Isn't it? around and they pour their pump water or your well water and they cock it back and serve to you on the street and I saw this one the color of the bottle of color the shape different and I sense this one did a thorough research my water if he, he, he want to get 
a marketing, a strong marketing angle that my water is not counterfeit. Are you getting it right? Because you cannot find his robbers around. He's not the one you find what I will call names that you find this one you can just fill it back and seal it. Is it it? And the person is just sitting it free and you think that they are take, taking clean water, table water, your well is better than what you are drinking. I bought one at the time, tra a traveling home around the Ajakuta, and when I opened it, it was smelling. Definitely, it could not be ever water. It couldn't be swan water. But people have just produced and put labor. That is an idea. It's an idea that to come. Idea hidden. There are things that are hidden. Anything you get easily and cheaply on the surface, people because of laziness don't even want stress. Ah, this one is difficult to learn. The pastor man who, who told us they they had a uh, an uh, apprentice who came to learn how to make suit. He said, "This one too, they take time. Let me do a captain shirt and." Uh, and trousers. Say this one, ah, to cut, to join hand, to put, to part, to do this. I know fit to, and you wanted to become a millionaire. Listeners, today you receive grace, and God will give you inspiration. This is where the force of inspiration comes. Ability to see what others are not seeing. Hidden riches of secret places. Not in secret places, but of secret places that we know that is the factor of God. And the communion table will do exactly that this morning. Things that you don't know before, you don't recognize before. After this today's meeting, you see and you see beyond in the name of Jesus. When Jesus died and resurrected, he told them that after three days, he will come out of the grave. His disciples, those who love him, they travel from a village around Jerusalem, Emmaus. They journey depending on the road, 7 to 14 kilometers. They were trekking with leg. Are you getting me right? True disciples. They had traveled from the village. They have come to the town. And they did not see him. Praise God. They forgot, they don't believe that he said after three days they will not meet him. So they were angry. They were they were devastated. They were feeling so bad. Our Savior. So all the way they were talking, they were talking in low tone. And Jesus appeared. He joined them in the conversation. He started asking them, What are you people saying? That's a Luke chapter 1. 23 there about. What are you people saying? Praise God. Amen. What are you people? Look, look 24. Read the whole story now. There, but in verse 30 to 32. See what I'm saying? Say, are you a stranger in this land? That good man. Praise God. They know him. That good man. They had impacted our life. They have taken by their wicked hand. They killed him. And now we could not find his corpse again. They were dejected. So when they came to his to, to the house and it came to pass, he sat, he followed them home and they sat at meat with them. He took bread, a symbol of communion, and he blessed it. And break it and give to them. Verse 31. Praise the Lord. And their eyes were what? Their eyes were open and they knew him. They recognize him. That's for few who are seeing great opportunity. You don't recognize it as a great opportunity in this meeting today. After this communion, when you see opportunity, you recognize it. Jesus told the parable of a man who was going on a journey. Not the only one has passed that. He said he found what? A precious stone. Pierre. Everybody has been passing that.
He didn't recognize it. He went back to sell everything he had so that he could come to buy the field. It's about recognition of opportunity. It's by you. Oh, if I say the government, also a subsidy, this is it's not the what will you do? What are you seeing through these problems? They are I say, Oh, this is Jesus, but they have spent hours without knowing him. Some of you are sitting on wealth you have not known. There's a day or two. Some of them start to say, ah, and this thing has been here, and I've been seeing it all. From today, anything that will turn your life around, any man that will turn your life around, any woman that will turn your life around, any idea that will turn your life around, any news that will turn your life around, you listen to it, you recognize that there's something that God has packaged for me in this episode. In the mighty name of Jesus. They say, in verse 32, in verse 32, what happened? And they say one to another, did not our heart burn within us? Were we not inspired? That is the power of inspiration. Were we not inspired? Why he talked with us by the way, and why he opened to us the scriptures? Is someone inspired this morning? Are you inspired? And when you read to the next verse, they took their journey again to, to eh, back to Jerusalem. Inspiration put you, and they rose up. Is somebody there with me? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. You can't say I'm inspired and you sit down. There's those of you that say God has put this in my heart to do and I sit down. It's not enough to be inspired. It's an, it must more to rise. To put the inspiration to work. There's somebody that God is placing something in his or her heart. Let me see if you get up tomorrow to start executing it. And let me see that demon that will stop your rising. Once you have been inspired, take a step. I've said this often and often. 2014, I was driving to the office and we are saying we will not put anything in school around, around here. We have land, we have places of work to put school. And then I told the everybody knew. And I was coming out of my car. I put one leg down, the left leg down, naturally. And I heard the Lord say, Build school here. No reason. I went straight to the office and I called my staff. Dead. I said, Look, the Lord said we should build school here. He said, It's well, low. I said, It's well. And I was seated. Are you getting me right? That's how I do. It is well. You are. Say, The Lord said we should build school here. Now, I just had, not yesterday, this morning, less than two minutes ago, I expect to say, Okay, where do you go to a message? He said, uh, But she was right. Because he knew I was not rich than 30,000 naira on the earth. Do you hear that? So she had imagined school that will reopen in two weeks' time. Where do you, is this man is something, this suffering is hurting his head to build school in 14 days. Where do you put the money? She was right. And I go like, it is well. And you are seated. She got up. So what should I do? I said, go and call a mason. And the mason came, draw leg first now. And before no, when you are inspired, you don't sit down. That idea that God put in your hand, He put in your heart these four or five days. Start as you are living here now. Start acting. Say, did our heart not is for we not inspired? Is our heart not born with us? And the rose immediately. They took the journey to go and get their expectation. In the name of Jesus, by the communion table today, your eye will open and you will be inspired. Your eye will open and you will be inspired. Your eye will open and you will be inspired. And by tomorrow, you are already acting. By next week, you have a testimony. By the end of the year, the result of it, you come to show in the name of Jesus. Be inspired. 
in Jesus' name. Let your heart burn for greatness. In the name of Jesus. He took the bread and he blessed it. Lord Jesus, this is all you gave to this man of Emmaus. You bless it. This bread is blessed. Led by this token of your body, O oh Lord, let every heart born. Let every heart be inspired. Inspiration. Synergized with action. Inspiration that is backed up, that is connected, working in hand, hand in hand with action. Let be what will happen to them today. Let them see opportunity. I recognize it. This is all you gave. And the same you commanded that you gave. That we should do this in remembrance of you until you come. I do that today. I serve them this bread. It is blessed. It is blessed. This is your body. This is your flesh. I bless it in your name. Let it be a token of inspiration in everyone's life. In Jesus' precious name. That night to his crucifixion, he also took the bread he served them. And he told Paul, see this table is a table of blessing. Anywhere there's a strong force of curse, of curses, pulling any man down, that stronghold is broken today. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The same way I serve you this table for inspiration. This is communion for inspiration. Your heart will not be blunt again. Your eye will sit in, design it, you know where opportunity is. From today, in Jesus' precious name.